The golden age of serial killers ran between the 1950s and 2000. During this time, they caught prolific serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, and John Wayne Gacy. With modern forensic technology, you would think that it would be easier to catch a serial killer, but it is estimated that there are about 25 to 50 serial killers active in America right now. Here are a list of five active serial killers that you have never heard of. Or maybe you have heard of them. I don't know what you know. Before we jump into our investigation, please don't forget to stab that subscription button as well as slash that notification bell so you'll be alerted every single time I post a new true crime story. The first killer on our list is the Southside Strangler. In 2014, an investigative journalist named Thomas Hargrove noticed a pattern amongst a group of 51 unsolved female murder victims. Most of the victims were women of color, they were drug users and sex workers, and most of the murders happened in abandoned buildings or outdoors. And the most terrifying thing of all is that all of the murders were done very closely together in either the south side or the west side of Chicago. And in every single case, the cause of death was either strangulation or asphyxiation. Hargrove developed an algorithm that can flag homicide data to track potential serial killers. After connecting all 51 murders to be done by one person or a small group of people, he formed the Chicago Accountability Project. Hargrove was then put on a task force with the FBI and Chicago police in 2019. What makes this case especially frustrating and hard to solve is that only 18 of the 51 victims had DNA on their body. So that's very unusual for this type of murder because if you're strangling somebody or someone's strangling you and they are that close to you, most likely you're going to be fighting for your life. So it seems rather unusual that so few victims have any skin under their nails or any hair on them whatsoever. The DNA samples collected also did not match any criminals in the FBI database. And all of the DNA was not tested until 2019. So this really hurt Hargrove's investigation because he was not able to contact any potential witnesses or any of the victim's families while the murder was still fresh in their minds. This was years after many of these women have been killed. So, you know, details get lost, things get mistaken, and this really is hurting his case, the fact that the DNA was processed so many years after many of these murders took place. The pandemic has slowed this case down to a crawl and the labs are not able to test these sexual assault kits and go through sexual assault cases that are in the labs waiting to be tested because of, you know, there are only so many lab workers that could be in there during the time and they're just not able to get it done. They don't have enough manpower. And so this is slowing the case down because they're not able to find any potential um, victims that maybe got away from this person and you know can help in the investigation and unfortunately due to the fact that sex workers often go by aliases and are transient it can be hard to nail down who has seen this killer and who can give investigators any more information it is likely that there is at least one victim that was able to get away from the killer there are currently no leads on this case so next time you take a trip to the bean in chicago definitely watch your back the second serial killer on our list is the Jeff Davis 8 murders. These killings are sometimes called the Jennings 8 as well, and they refer to a series of unsolved murders in Jefferson Davis Parish, Louisiana. Between 2005 and 2009, the bodies of eight women were found in the swamps near Jennings, Louisiana. These women's bodies were decomposed so bad that it was very hard to determine what the cause of death was. The main reason this case has gone unsolved is because of missteps by the police. There has been lost evidence as well as witnesses claiming police are suspects in the case. An investigative reporter, Ethan Brown, has been able to determine that there are multiple suspects for this case. But because of the missing evidence, none of the suspects can be charged. Many people in this area believe it is a single serial killer and not a group as Ethan suggested. One particular fact about this case that most victims knew each other very well. Two victims, Kristen Gary Lopez and Brittany Gary, were cousins, and Brittany lived with Crystal Benoit. All of the women shared traits such as drug abuse, poverty, and prostitution. All of the women in this case were police informants, which is 
crazy. That is like such a odd occurrence. I've never heard about that happening before in any case. They also alerted police about other Jeff 8 Davis murders before they even died on their own. So some of the later ladies that were killed alerted police about the previous ones and then they were murdered as well. Several of the victims were present when police shot and killed a drug dealer named Leonard Crochet in 2005. The same day, several other people were killed who had connections to this case, including Alvin Lewis, who had a child with victim Whitney Dubois, and the brother-in-law of the first victim, Loretta Lewis. Many of the women killed were present during this drug raid and witnessed the police killing Leonard. The police misconduct in this case is outrageous. Warren Gary, who was one of the case investigators, was seen by a witness transporting a body in his truck and purchasing that truck specifically to get rid of a body. And in 2009, the state ordered that DNA tests were taken at the police station in this town and they all took a DNA sample and the results were never released as to if any of their DNA matched what was on the victims. Three main suspects are Frankie Richard. He is a local strip club owner and drug addict. He admitted to having sexual relations with most of the victims, and he was the last person seen with victim Kristen Lopez. The other suspects are Byron Chad Jones and Lawrence Nixon, who is a cousin of Lasania Brown. The two were briefly charged with murder for victim Ernestine Patterson, but were let go because the police did not check the crime scene for any evidence until 15 months after the crime had happened, after Ernestine had been murdered. So they found that there was no blood evidence where Ernestine was murdered. It seems unlikely that this case will ever be solved unless there is some intervention in this police department which is really sad because I do feel that these victims deserve justice. The third serial killer is the Abaddon Forest serial killer. For this next case, we are traveling overseas to Nigeria. Back in 2014, a motorcyclist was traveling along a forest and made a horrifying discovery. He found a small area of decrepit buildings with over 20 decomposed corpses inside and many severed human skulls. He also found 10 people who were alive chained to slaughter benches. Other buildings had piles of passports, clothing, and shoes. Police have never been able to get in contact with any of the passport holders. Many of the locals feel that this is a ritualistic killing. Nigeria is a very religious company and cannibalism has very deep roots within some of the older religions of the country. And many people of the area travel to this forest to see if they can find any of their missing family members and many people have found remains or clothing that have belonged to two previous family members who passed away. Police did have a man in custody named Sunday Shidope, but there have not been any other updates due to this case because he has escaped from prison multiple times. I'm very interested in looking into this case more, so if you'd like me to do a deep dive on this one, please let me know because I found it extremely interesting. And next time you think about taking a walk in the woods, I would think again. The fourth killer on our list is Pedro Lopez, the monster of the Andes. This case is particularly interesting because we have a name, but a missing killer. Pedro Lopez was born in Colombia in 1948. His mother was a prostitute and forced him to watch her partake in extreme sexual acts. He was often assaulted by the men she had sex with, and these events affected his psyche, as he later told police. In the early 1970s, Pedro began to sexually assault little girls and kill them. In 1980, he had an abduction go wrong, and he was apprehended by locals, and he was arrested in Peru. Pedro claimed he killed three girls a week for two years at this point, and this would make his victim count about 300. At this point, the police did not believe him, but he was able to lead the police to a mass grave that held 53 of his victims. Police documentation for Pedro's case is not consistent, but I was able to find that he was let out of prison in 1994 and spent three years in a mental facility after. He has not been seen since 1998, but there is a murder in 2002 and the victim matched Pedro's M.O. Despite having 53 confirmed victims and 300 unsolved victims, Pedro was only in custody for 17 years, and that is extremely worrying for the people of South America. 
And the fifth killer on our list is the West Mesa Bone Collector. In February 2009, a woman was out walking her dog and saw what she believed to be human bones on a mesa near Albuquerque, New Mexico. Police soon investigated and found the remains of 11 women along the mesa. The women were all sex workers and aged between 15 and 32, and most of them were Hispanic as well. There was one woman who was pregnant at the time of her murder. There are two suspects in this case. One is named Lorenzo Manitoy, and he lived in a trailer a few miles away from where the victims were found. He was killed in 2006 by a sex worker. Investigators believe that she was Lorenzo's next victim and she was just able to kill him first. Joseph Blay, he was a known rapist in the area and when the police invaded his home, they found a large amount of women's underwear and jewelry. Unfortunately, the police have not been able to connect either one of these men with the murder and this case is currently open. Which one of these killers did you all find the most interesting? I personally found the Nigerian killings to be very interesting as well as the Mesa Bone collectors because there's really not a ton of information on either one and I just want to really like dig in and find something about both of these cases because they're incredibly interesting and really quite scary because there's nobody to like fully track it to. So let me know which ones you guys thought were interesting in the comments and if you know of any other active serial killers and where they are doing their killings, please let me know as well. So thank you so much for watching this video guys, I really appreciate it and I hope you all stay safe out there and bye bye.